looking at Pundit, which is a simple yet robust and scalable authorization system. In our previous episodes, we looked at who would have access to our system, and now today we're going to look at what they have access to. So in our example today, we're going to look at a blog post where multiple people can post to the blog. So here we have Samuel Jackson, and then we have our John Doe user, which I am currently logged in as John Doe. Since I am logged in as the author of this article, I do see it even though it is not published. If I click on one of the links, it takes me to the show page. You'll see they have an edit button and a delete button. If I go to the publish article of another user, you'll see that I do not have a edit button or delete button since I am not the author of this article. So to get started, we'll add the pundit gem to our gem file. Be sure to run bundle and restart your Rails application. And then within your Rails application in the terminal, you can type Rails generate pundit install, and this will create your generic application policy. You can also use the pundit generator for creating policies for your models. So you would type Rails generate pundit policy and then the lowercase name of your model. So the pundit generators will create a new folder under your app directory called policies. And here is the application policy that we generated. The first thing that you'll see is it initializes the user. And this will reference to the current user who is logged in. And then we're also referencing the record. And by default, when you use the policies, it'll inherit from the application policy, which you can override within each one of your policies. So you'll have your standard controller actions in here, and just take note that it is followed by the question mark, which is just a standard notation for a pundit policy method. And then we'll take a look at the pundit policy scopes, which is a great way to list a whole bunch of records that a particular user has access to, and not so much a single record. So next, we'll go into our application controller.rb file, and then we'll just type in include pundit. So in our articles controller, we'll create two different after action callbacks. One is the verified authorized, and then the other one is verify policy scoped. And the verify policy scoped is only going to be on the index action because this is where we are listing out multiple records. I'll dive into each one of the actions in a little bit, but the main thing that we need to focus on right now is the after action verify authorized. So when we go to show a page, or when we go to edit or create a new one, you'll see under the define new, we are calling authorize article. And this will reference back to our articles policy under the new question mark method. And we have tapped into the before action set article method, which if we scroll down and have a look, you'll see for each one of the other methods, I'm calling authorize article on it. And this will perform the pundit authorization, which if it returns true from one of our pundit methods, then it'll allow us to proceed. If false, then this will cause it to throw an error. So this is our articles policy, and you'll see that we are inheriting from the application policy, but then we also have this subclass of scope, and this will return the scope, which is going to be our article where publish is true, or our articles where the user ID is the current user's ID, and we just have try ID in here in case of the user's not logged in, because this is a publicly accessible page. So going back to our application, we can see the three articles that we have here, and two of them are owned by the user that we are logged in as. However, one of them is unpublished. So if we were to log out, you'll now see the only two published articles. On the show action of an article, you'll see where we have our edit button and our delete button. And these will only be visible if the user has access to edit or delete the article. For example, if we go to an article that was not created by our user, you'll see that the edit and delete button do not exist. And if we try to go into the slash edit, we'll get the error, pundit not authorized error. And within our show page, we have the links to edit and delete our article, and we're only going to display these if this is true. If the policy add article update returns true, or the policy article destroy is true. And both of these are referencing to our article's policy and the update method and the destroy method. 
So our update method looks like this, where we are just checking if the user is owner of the record, and that's just a simple private method where we're calling at user is equal to the record user. And this record is passed from our application policy, which in this case is the record of our article. And you'll see for destroy, we are checking if the user is the owner of the record as well. And our show page is a little bit different because we want to make sure that the user is the owner of the record or if the record is published. So if the record is published and anyone can access it. Otherwise, you have to be the owner of the record if the record is not published. Within our application controller, we can call rescue from pundit not authorized error and redirect to the root URL, alerting them that you do not have access to this page. Going back to our application, we can refresh, and then you'll see that we are now redirected to our root URL, and then we get the alert display. So definitely check out the documentation because it covers just about every scenario that you can come across when trying to authorize your application. For example, it has headless policies where you may not have a model necessarily attached, for example, like a dashboard for a user where you want to send them to the dashboard or give them a link, but it's not a model or something that's really within your application. It's just a link or a page view that you still want to restrict. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.